Hello and welcome back to another edition of Viper Bites Thursday Night Football Primetime Preview. We've got the 7-4 and four Dallas Cowboys heading down to the bayou to take on the 5-6 and six New Orleans Saints. And these Saints, despite being at 5-6, and six, are very much alive in the NFC Wild Card right now. Both these squads are coming off of tough Thanksgiving Day losses there. The Cowboys dropped one to the Raiders. The Saints dropped one to the Bills. But before we dive into this tale of the tape, a little housekeeping item here going on here. Make sure if you're watching us on the Vipers Network, you give us a good old-fashioned thumbs up there and hit that subscribe button. If you're listening to us on Apple, Spotify, Anchor, Pocket Cast, whatever podcasting platform that we're catch, coming on to you live, make sure to rate and review that. And as always, if you've got those starts and sits questions, if you've got waiver wires, if you're looking for fantasy football advice, Hit me up at Matt Donnelly, FF, on Twitter, and I'll be happy to sort you out there a little bit. Now, let's get right into this one. We are looking at the Dallas Cowboys and that quarterback position, Dak Prescott. Prescott comes into this one after having a pretty good Thanksgiving game against the Raiders, which saw him throw for 375 yards and two touchdowns, despite not having CeeDee Lamb or Amari Cooper at his disposal. Outside of Week 2's game against the Chargers and Week 11's contest against the Chiefs, Dak has been consistently putting up 19 or more fantasy points in every contest that he has been able to suit up for, throwing two or more touchdowns in eight of those 10 games, and he sits 10th among scoring uh, fantasy quarterbacks as far as fantasy points are concerned there, with 209.68 fantasy points, averaging 20.97 per contest. Now, New Orleans, teams have been able to throw the ball on them as they've been averaging 19.2 fantasy points per game against, which is the fifth most, while surrendering 2,931 passing yards and 13 touchdowns to date. Prescott, he's been pretty good. He sits eighth in the NFL in passing with 2,932 yards while throwing for 22 touchdowns in just 10 games. Heading over to the running back position here, you got Tony Pollard there, you got Ezekiel Elliott. Now, Early reports were Ezekiel Elliott and his knees may be limited as the Cowboys kind of look back to kind of pull back a little bit of that workload moving forward and give a little bit of extra something something to Tony Pollard, who has proven to be very effective. But Jerry Jones goes, eh, not so fast. You know, he says it's full steam ahead with Ezekiel Elliott and that workload. We'll see how that actually translates on Thursday night. I would see, I would guess there'd be a little bit of a cut down on those touches for Elliott, but who knows? Now, Elliott has been averaging just over 17 fantasy points per game and checks in as the RB7 through the first 12 weeks of the season. It doesn't hurt that he's been able to produce 11 or more fantasy points in every game this season with the exception of week one's contest against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And you know, they've turned out to be a pretty good run defense so far. Now, Elliot, you look at what he's done. He has found the end zone eight times this season and he's done so three times in the last three games with a couple of those coming against the Atlanta Falcons in week number 10. Now, perhaps more impressive is his use in the passing game where he has seen at least three targets in every game since week six. As for P Tony Pollard, the dude has earned himself more touches. I'm just not sure he's going to get those touches. And the touches he has been getting, he has been very effective. Now, Pollard comes in as the RB27. He's averaging just under 11 fantasy points per game. He wants a bang for your buck, 100 carries, 531 yards. That's about 5.3 yards per touch or per carry. Now, 29 receptions. On 31 targets, he's turned that into 256 yards. Add that all up, bibbity boppity boo you throw the math, you carry the one. That adds up to about 6.2 yards per touch. And that's not even including what he brings to the kick return game, which we saw that happen on Thanksgiving. Now, heading over to the wide receiver position, C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, both missed last week, and Michael Gallup and Cedric Wilson stepped up in their absence. More on those two here in a moment. It's looking more and more as though Cooper is going to play this week after missing the last two contests due to COVID and COVID protocols. Cooper was activated from the reserve COVID list Tuesday, and CeeDee Lamb should remain the primary target in this week's contest against the Saints. Now, Lamb comes into this one as a wide receiver 19 this year and has posted 163 points in just 10 games. That's obviously 16.3 fantasy points per game, which ranks 15th. Now, that's also including, you know, those games that Antonio Brown plays. He's only played in five, but he kind of charts in a little bit higher than some wide receivers based on what he was did in those five games. Now, his Lamps 748 receiving yards is good for 20th, and his receptions of thir his 13 receptions of 20 or more yards is good enough for 12th. 
Cooper's absence is notable as he averages 14.7 fantasy points per game and is the wide receiver 30 on the season, playing in just nine games. How much will he play this week after missing the previous two and trying to come back from COVID? That's anybody's guess right now. But he has recorded two 100-yard games this season. And you know what? One of those happened to kind of come back way back in week one. So I don't know how much weight you want to put on that. Speaking of 100-yard games, two other receivers that were in the lineup last week, Michael Gallup, Cedric Wilson, they both hit that century mark against a Raiders team that had only previously allowed Deontay Johnson back in week two to accomplish that feat. Now, Wilson and Gallup both came out and made some big plays there where Dak Prescott dropped some absolute dimes, 51-yard pass, a 41-yard pass to both these receivers. I would expect Cooper to be somewhat limited this week as he continues to battle the COVID, opening the door for Michael Gallup to find a path to production against the Saints team that has allowed over 2,000 yards, two receivers, and 11 touchdowns this season. New Orleans is averaging the fifth most fantasy points to the position against at 37.74. So Cedric Wilson, yeah, you might have one more week of fantasy relevance as we, uh, relevancy as well. Now at the tight end position, Dalton Schultz, he faces the Saints team that while they've been friendly hosts to wide receivers, they have not been as generous to the tight end position, ranking in the top 10 in fantasy points allowed per game at 10.58, as well as eighth in yards surrendered at 465 and fifth in touchdowns, only allowing three. Schultz, Schultz has been pretty good though, so let's give the man his due here. He is the tight end five in fantasy right now, and he's averaging 11.5 fantasy points per game. He sits sixth among tight ends in receiving yards with 537, sixth in receptions, 47, and he has four TDs. That ranks eighth. Schultz has produced in back-to-back -back games 11 fantasy points in each of those weeks and double digits in seven of the last 11 contests this season. Now heading over to the New Orleans Saints, there's all kinds of news coming out of there. We don't know what to expect from the quarterback position here in week number 13. Trevor Simeon, Taysom Hill. Now, Hill started this week taking the practice reps there at the first team on Monday, kind of signaling a change under center heading into Thursday night's showdown. But Sean Payton left us kind of like with the old, uh, we'll see how that works out. Now, Hill, he is trying to recover from a foot injury, but it's going to, and it's going to be a pain tolerance kind of call on Thursday, whether or not Hill can give her a go. All indications so far or Hill will Hill is going to be under center. Now, the Saints, despite that 500, they're very much a 500 record, sub-500 record. They're very much in this NFC wildcard hunt right now. There is like seven teams all battling for that seventh spot right now. So it's really, you win and you could find yourself in the driver's seat in a hurry. If I was Dallas, I'd probably try to prepare for Taysom Hill and hope for Trevor Simeon. That's kind of where I'm going because – Back in 2020, from weeks 11 to 14, Hill managed to produce at least 18 fantasy points in each of those games. And in three of those four, he had at least 23 pass attempts with at least 33 rushing yards in each of those games. In five games, Simeon, he's averaging 16.48 fantasy points per game and has been productive and giving you productive starts in three of the five games in which he's played, throwing for multiple touchdowns in three of those. And he does have a three-to-one touchdown to interception ratio, tossing nine touchdowns in five games. Now, heading over to the running back position, again, question mark, question mark, question mark, all here. Now, again, Alvin Kamara, he looks to be questionable. Mark Ingram looks like he's ready to go regardless. Uh, how good has Kamara been? He has played eight games, and he is the RB12 this year. His 19.8 fantasy points ranks fourth behind Derrick Henry, Jonathan Taylor, and Austin Eckler. Kamara does, does it all, I'm telling you. 539, uh, 530 yards on the ground on 146 carries, 310 yards receiving on 32 receptions. When Kamara is healthy, you play Kamara. Unless Taysom Hill is under center. Okay, maybe that's a slight exaggeration, but Hill does enjoy calling his own number on the goal line. And in three of those four games in which Hill was under center last year, Kamara failed to record 10 or more receiving yards in those. Now, Kamara has missed the last three games. So it looks like he's ready to contribute once again, heading into week 13. And you know what? The Saints need him right now. They need him. They're in that playoff battle, and he has posted six-plus games with 12 or more fantasy points and scored touchdowns in every game but two. After missing week 12 with a knee injury, Mark Ingram, he says he is ready to go and was back on the practice field as well Tuesday. So you know what? That's a good sign heading into this Thursday night classic. Ingram has 50 or more scrimmage yards in four straight and has had back-to-back 100-yard -back scrimmage games. That's before missing last week. Dallas, 
yeah, they've they've been tough on running backs this year. They're ranking seventh in the fantasy points allowed. And as for Tony Jones, he's not the answer to any question that you may have. Heading over to the wide receiver position, you've got Traquan Smith and the Saints pass catchers who square off against the 26th ranked fantasy defense when it comes to the wide receiver position. The Dallas Cowboys are allowing 36.93 fantasy points per game and have given up 2,011 yards and 10 touchdowns to opposing receivers thus far. I like this matchup better for the receivers with Simeon under center, but I don't think that's what we're going to get here. Last, last week's Thanksgiving Day game, was rough on all Saints. Smith caught four passes for 31 yards, but he had been coming off of three games of double-digit production the previous four. I wouldn't expect a huge week, but five for 71 is very much in the cards against the Cowboys, which is a solid 12 fantasy points. Two more receivers, Marquez Callaway, Little Jordan Humphrey. Raise your hand if you had Little Jordan being the leading receiver against the Buffalo Bills last week. Stop it. Just stop it. Put your hands down. Anyway, Humphrey led the Saints with 47 receiving yards. Now, those 47 receiving yards account for 67% of his receiving yards to date this season. Now, other pass catches are Ty Montgomery. He had 31. Drake Juan Smith had 31. Marcus Callaway had 24 on two receptions. If the Saints want to get this offense back on track, it's got to go through Marquez Callaway to get this accomplished. Callaway may only have 27 receptions this year, but six of those have been for touchdowns, and he's averaging 14.7 per catch. It's not for the lack of trying on the Saints' part. He has been their top target dog there with 51 targets so far this season. And at the tight end position, Adam Truman, he's on IR. That means Nick Vanett, he gets to face against the 22nd-ranked fantasy defense against tight ends this season, and is coming off a game where he had the lone touchdown for the Saints. He also only had one target, so you're probably not starting him regardless of the situation. And with all that, that has concluded the Thursday Night Football Primetime Preview. you want more stats and facts, head over to FantasyPoints.com. Enter promo code 21 Vipers 10 Get 10% off that subscription. And you know what? It's great to be a blessing, but it's better to bless someone else. So remember that and hold those loved ones tight tonight. Take care.